so well, welcome people i am back with another video but you know we have to hydrate first so let's get into it all right so what we're gonna do today is basically make a wig from some bundles that i had for a very long time however it wasn't giving and these are some deep wave um the waves weren't waving anymore <laughs> if that makes sense but yeah so the first thing i did was place my frontal on so my wig cap i'm using a mesh dome wig cap the mesh dome wig cap is the best thing to use to make your wig all right so you know yeah i was watching tv mm -hmm. uh to place the, the frontal onto the wig cap can be a little tedious at times if you don't if you're doing it for the first time and um i must say that this is my first time making a frontal from scratch so it was a little tedious but nevertheless i get it done so guys after pinning down the frontal as you can see i was struggling a little bit and um i'm just gonna allow the video to play out i don't want to talk too much but i'll d this is what i'm going to do for you guys this is a promise i'll definitely make a detailed video on how to make a wig especially not necessarily to make the wig especially how to place your wig cap how to cut not your wig cap i'm sorry how to place your frontals and how to get your frontal to fit and how to measure your head that is very important i don't know if you realize many other times when you buy some wigs they are a bit bigger than your head and um, this is one of the perks about making your own wig you can make it to fit and by now everyone knows that the first thing that you're going to do is to sew the frontal onto the wig cap and then we go in with our bundles but that's the first thing that i did Now that one side is finished i'm gonna sew the other side as you can see i use t-pins to secure the frontal onto the lace before sewing it down and we have to ensure that the frontal is very flat onto the uh, wig cap before sewing it down <music> Thank you. 
so i need something to line make the lines on the cap so you know when I'm, I'm sewing the bundles you know it's a bit easier so here um normally i'll use a metallic um pencil but as a jamaican we improvise we improvise a lot so i'm using the white pro concealer along with a eyeliner brush to make the lines on the cap so i can sew along within the line so if you have if you have a if, i think you can use any color once you know it's visible like red blue pink whatever color even if it's a case where you have lipstick and you need to make a wig and you need a little guide then that is something that you can use now as you can see these lines are one inch away when i was sewing the um the hair itself i didn't sew them this wide just half inch instead of one inch away but yeah that is it just in case you're confused as it pertains to why am i using a tape measure so the tape measure um ensuring that the measurement from the frontal to the back of the head is 12 and also the measurement bit uh, apart each line that i made as you can see it was one inch but like i mentioned when i was sewing the bundles in because i didn't want them to be wide normally um if you're using a sewing machine um you could sew them one inch apart but you'd have to double the width but because i don't have a, a sewing machine as yet so i have to sew them one inch apart because i don't want the wig to be um who said wide or thin <laughs> But yeah, so this is something that I do. I'm measuring the length of the hair to ensure that they're on the same length. Um, but they were all 20 inches. <laughs> that the wig is complete i went ahead and placed a towel over the wig cap over the mannequin head i'm sorry and then placed the wig over it so the purpose of the uh white towel is a guideline to plot the hairline so i can see how much i need to take or not so i use a hot comb to smooth the edges back you can always pluck your hair dry or you can spray it with some water i i like to pluck my hair wet so i did spray it with some water first and you can get that cute little bottle on sheeting for three dollars another things that i learned about plucking never pluck directly in front of the hairline always part out some of the hair and pluck behind and as you go along you 
do the same thing just maybe three parts and pluck and then after finish you brush the hairline to see how much it needs to take away now that i have finished plucked the hairline how i want it i brush the hair back and i look at it and this is perfect for me i don't think i need to take anything more from that i don't like I, my when my wig cap or my frontals are over plucked because what happened after a while, you can get bald spot after combing and combing and combing. Now it's time to flat iron the hair so i go into section i'm using a small pea size amount of this serum i'm gonna put it up for you you don't need a lot because you don't want the hair to be um weighed down because when you use too much oil it can weigh down now this flat iron is a boss when i say it's the boss i mean it's the boss i got it on amazon i'm gonna leave it in the link below and you can purchase it As you can see, I changed my clothes because this was the next day. So I did a test to see if the hair will curl back using some mousse to see what it looks like since I manipulated that much. But apparently I think it would go back to curls. using both the flat iron and the hot comb that's the magic because look at that you cannot tell this was a curly hair before smooth <music> this is the finished look of the wig um, tell me in the comments what you think I did went ahead and used some flexi rod along at the ends and this can wear as a glueless wig that's the importance of making the wig to fit to your head because you can wear it without using any glue that's the perfect thing about it but look at that 